All right. Well, we are going to start a new sermon series through the Gospel of Luke. Uh, if you got that uh, PowerPoint back there, could you pull that up? Um, our new uh, Gospel um, study is going, as I said, going to be in the Gospel of Luke. And it's going to be called uh, CSI, Christ's Story Investigated, which is the theme of the Gospel of Luke. Um, most of us, when we approach uh, the Gospels. We see them as just the same story told over and over and over. But what we're seeing is an account of the works, the ministry, and the life of Jesus Christ from different perspectives. And as far as uh, Luke is concerned, Luke was not an eyewitness himself. Luke was a medical doctor who came on the scene uh, in, in regards to the biblical narrative uh, in Paul's work. He became a companion with Paul. But as far as uh, Jesus is concerned to Luke, Jesus was somebody that Luke investigated. He wasn't a, a man who just heard a clever story and said, that sounds good, I'm going to chase after that. No, Luke was a guy who poured himself in to investigate the stories that he had heard. He had heard about the miracles. He had heard about the teaching. He had heard about the crucifixion and the resurrection. And he investigated these things. These were not just mere stories or claims. These were certifiable facts for him because he talked to the eyewitnesses. He went and searched for the truth. And what we find in the Gospel of Luke, as well as the Gospel of Acts, is Luke's recorded account of those things that he found in the course of his investigation. And the primary uh, function of this investigation, or the theme, if you will, was investigating the man who is God. And this is important. This is important for all Christians to do because I would submit to you a faith that is not tested is no faith at all. Some of us, uh, we proceed through this uh, Christian walk with this pie in the sky type of attitude that have never looked into the claims of Christ, never looked into the factual evidence. We've never tried it on for ourselves. And thus, it's just a story. And when it's just a story, it can be set aside, just like all other stories are set aside. How many times have you purposely read um, Moby Dick? Maybe you read it once. Maybe you read it in school. How many times have you purposely read through uh, Shakespeare's works? I know for me, I read some of them in school because I was required to know the story so I could pass the test. And since then, I've graduated some 15 years ago, I have never picked up those works again. The same thing happens within Christendom when the claims of Jesus Christ are just a story. And when we begin this study of investigating the man who is God, we're going to begin in Luke chapter 1. And we're going to begin this investigation in a sermon entitled, It Starts at Home. Because like any investigation, it's not just about the events that took place. It's to investigate or uh, find out the background behind those events. Uh, we just heard recently about the uh, Sandy Hook tragedy and how these young children were murdered in cold blood in their school. But part of that police investigation took place outside of that school, investigating the man who uh, uh, acted in such a way to take a life. They investigated not only him, but his family and his close friends. And yes, they did investigate the crime scene. But they needed to find out who this guy was and who he related himself to. I think we do the same thing. Maybe not in such a severe case as far as a, a tragedy. But we do that when we pick our friends. We do that when we pick our spouse. 
We investigate. We find out who they associate themselves with. Why? Because we want the broader picture. And Luke begins his investigation of the Lord Jesus Christ by looking at the broader picture. He wants to see who it is that he related himself to. And I want to begin with this. <clears throat> Do we understand that when we begin to teach children things, children learn more by, through what they catch, what is caught, than what is taught. And, and that, that's a cliche, uh, but that's a cliche because it's true. Children learn more by what they catch through our example than the things that we tell them. Okay, so as it applies to Christianity, if Jesus Christ is just a cleverly invented figure um, within literature, he will have no impact on my everyday life. And if that's how I live, then my children or the next generation will pick that up really quick, even if I tell them that he is fundamentally important. Now, with that in mind, I want to ask you this question. What is it? that you're known for? What is it that your children catch from you, besides the flu, by the way? What is it that they pick up from your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ that they know to be true because they see it in you, because all of us pass along things? Because you guys go to that next slide. I don't know if you've seen this show. I love this show. Okay, Duck Dynasty. Duck Dynasty is a, is a show about um, uh, Phil Robertson, the guy on the left. Uh, he invented a duck call about 40 years ago and has become a multi-millionaire. But he doesn't live that way. He lives in a, uh, a little house out in the woods. And his sons, the one uh, to his right and the one on the far right, they now run the company. And uh, Phil, like all parents, pass along characteristics, pass along belief systems to their family. And for Phil, for the Duck Dynasty, what's been passed along is three things. Number one, the love of their beards. Everyone has a beard in that family, okay? Number two, the love of duck hunting, okay? Duck hunting is not only their livelihood, but is their passion. That's what they do. Phil no longer works in the day-to-day -day operations because he is too busy in the woods hunting, okay? But number three, and most importantly, is their faith. Uh, they are uh, powerful and unapologetic believers in Jesus Christ. Um, his two sons both um, went to seminary. Uh, you, if you saw them on the street, you would probably think, not a pastor, but a homeless guy. Um, but uh, faith is a very important thing in their life and on their show. Uh, they're oftentimes uh, seen talking about the things of God. Um, the end of every show ends and the family praying together. But the Duck Dynasty isn't just about the, their business, Duck Commander. It's not just about uh, selling duck calls. It's not about duck hunting. It's about the legacy of faith that was passed on uh, from father to son. And with that in mind, I would ask you, what kind of legacy are you going to pass on? What kind of things have you begun to pass on to your children so much so that they become a part of what they do? Is your faith part of that which that they will take up for themselves and carry on because they see it as important in and through your life. And I ask you that question because in the Gospel of Luke, we see this profound truth in Luke chapter 1, that God purposefully entrusted His one and only Son to a family of godly character. Did you ever think about that? That it wasn't a random accident that God entrusted His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as an infant and as a child to a teenage mother, Mary, and to this faithful man, Joseph, 
That was no accident. And, and I would submit to you that the reason he did it, because he saw three godly characteristics within these people. And I want to share these with you today. The first of which is he saw holiness in them. The second, he saw humility. And the third, he saw hopefulness. And those are the, the, the three character traits that they passed on to God's son as they raised him. And I, those are the three I want to share with you today. So let's begin our investigation of the Lord Jesus. In chapter 1, verse 1 of the Gospel of Luke. And the Word of God says this. <clears throat> Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seems good to me to write an orderly account to you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things that you have been taught. Stop right there. Okay, so Luke tells us the reason he is writing is because he wasn't there and he found uh, within his own heart this desire, this passion, if you will, to chase after the truth. And what's the Word of God says? The Word of God tells us if we seek, we will find. If we knock, the door will be open to us. And Luke took that literally. He said, I want to know the truth, so I'm going to chase after it. And when he found it, he said, this is too much to keep to myself, so I write an orderly account of the truths that I have discovered. And he wrote to Theophilus. What's Theophilus mean? It's obviously a man he was speaking to, but the name Theophilus is a profound truth hidden within it. It means lover of God. So if you are a lover of God this morning, the Gospel of Luke was written to you as an orderly account of the truths that were investigated through the eyewitnesses and through the discoveries that Luke himself found. Pick up in verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing the Lord's commands and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren. And they were both well along in years. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, he was serving as priest before God, and he was chosen by law according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time of the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right hand of the altar <clears throat> of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and <clears throat> you will give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice in his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Okay, stop right there. Okay. In these two initial characters, Zechariah and Elizabeth, who are kin to the Lord Jesus Christ. These are people who are close to the family. These are people who are uh, of godly character. We see this one characteristic that just shouts from the pages of Scripture, to me at least. We see the characteristic of holiness. And, and what is holiness? We've talked about that quite a bit over the past couple of months. Holiness, as far as God's concerned, is his, his total separation from the fallenness of humanity. He is wholly other than us. But we're not speaking about the holiness of God. We're speaking about the holiness of men. So what is it, uh, how is a person holy? And what does holy mean? 
Holy simply means to be set apart for God's work. Set apart for God's